Okay, before I get to the inside of the cab, I'm gonna show you the blackouts for the um, front of the cab. And again, I call them blackouts, but they're not really blackouts because the sun does go through these things. But again, again, these just magnet on. There's little spots where they clearly easily magnet on right here. You just magnet on these babies, snap them on. And then at this side, it's got this little foam thing, a little foam, little foam thing that kind of sits in the corner right there. So when the door closes, it'll kind of close in there. And along here, it just kind of stuffs in this little container right here. It actually works pretty good. Um, and then, of course, uh, you have one for, for the opposite side. Now, so for inside the truck, I'm not sure how well you can be able to see this because uh, there's not a lot of light in there. Uh, maybe if I flip on some lights here. Yeah, there we go. Um, you can see a little bit better. So it has a little bit different system. So it's got these um, little things that flip over the visors right here, and those go over the visors. And you can flip the visor out of the way. and. They basically just kind of hook up in there. These little ridge sections right here that kind of tuck up into the corner. But it actually works pretty good. It doesn't cover, you know, 100% of the light. But I think it actually works pretty good. Um, they're not that hard to put in. It takes maybe a couple minutes for each one of these. This is the most difficult one to put in because you got to wrap it around the visors and all that kind of jazz. But uh, it comes with the cat. It comes with it, and it's free, so it's actually pretty good. I might put some sort of reflective backing or something on here. Maybe um, sew it on or stick it on or something like that to really reflect out the light a little bit better than this is just like this funky type carpeting material or something like that. But uh, but anyway, so that's the uh, that's the window coverings. Yeah, I figured I'd show you what it looks like with the uh, screen actually zipped in here. You can see I've got it all snapped in. Actually, I didn't put all the snaps in because I'm just too lazy. But um, anyway, so you got that and you just use this little zipper and you zipper in and out and got nice access here. It doesn't have any snaps at the bottom. The snaps are just on the side, the side, the tops. And that's it. But it actually works pretty good. Watch out. Get out of my, get out of my truck. Okay. So, so anyway, that's the uh, zipped-in uh, screen at the back. Okay. Now we're going to go to the inside of the cab, and we're going to show you know the front part of the Ram ProMaster, which is just standard Ram ProMaster stuff that doesn't have anything to do with Winnebago. Um, so there are seats and stuff like that. Um, these got airbags in them and stuff like that. So they really couldn't change too much to, to the front of the cab. One thing that kind of annoyed me almost right off the bat when I got this was these seat belts. I can probably show you better here. Because they're built into the seat right there, man, I got I got screwed up shoulders and man, they yank on your shoulder. So I'm have to figure out some sort of system to to fix that so it doesn't yank on my shoulder so bad because the, the tension's actually pretty tight. But anyway, this is my little rant on that. So I'll go over the seats first of all. You got these uh, armrests here and you got these little dials right here that changes. You know, you can change the height of the armrest and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Um, the seat itself swivels, so you've got two controls in the front of the seat. You got this control right here, which pulls it so you can uh, swivel it, and then you got one. Forgive me for turning this upside down or something here. You got the one on the other side here. Pull that, and that that tilts the seat forward. Now you're probably gonna have to tilt the seat forward to be able to get it to swivel. So you tilt the seat forward to swivel because you know you got the dinette. It's just right behind it, but it works out great, but you have to flick this, and now you can swivel the seat. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Then you swivel the seat into its spot right there, and then you can um, then move the other side again, and these are not easy to do sometimes. Ugh, geez. Okay, so you pull this little lever right here, and it swivels it back, so. God, it's, it's so freaking hot over here. Okay, so anyway, so that, that works that. So it allows you, allows you to swivel the seat. So if you want to swivel again, just got a loose pull on that. It allows you to swivel and move the seat back and forth. Then it'll eventually lock into that position. So so if you're sitting here, yeah, it's actually it's actually pretty comfortable, which is what I'm thinking I'm gonna be doing when I'm on the road, like using it for work and stuff like that. I have the laptop here and uh, have the windows open and uh, have a nice little workspace. So that works out pretty good. So the same thing works for the, for the passenger seat. The best thing to do is to, um, Tilt, this, tilt the seat up first, pull that, it tilts up. Because to get it to swing around, it only swings around to there because it hits the cushion right here. Now, from what I understand, the 2015s, um, sorry, the 2014s, they didn't have the cutout of this cushion. I think it was the 2014s, early 2015s, didn't have this cutout, so they wouldn't even go that far. They'd only turn like here. But they do this cutout in this cushion, and it allows it to come around at least till there which is pretty good. So now you've got an angle for the TV. So now your angle sitting here and your TV's here. If you 
swing the TV out, you know, you're sitting here, then you get your angle right at the TV, which is actually pretty good. So you can just, you know, recline it right here. Let me get the right recline right here. So you recline right here and you're looking straight at the TV and it's, it's actually a pretty comfy position. You can stick your feet up on the couch or on the table if you have poor manners. Uh, but it makes a, makes a pretty comfy TV watching pos uh, position. I mean, the TV's kind of aimed kind of high. I'm thinking about uh, changing the angle on the TV so it angles, you know, down down more. Um, but uh, but anyways, I regress. So anyway, so that's that's your angle for uh, the passenger chair. So I think it's actually pretty awesome that that you can do that. Um, again, this allows you to seat um, five people here at this dinette because at the dinette you got this little thing, a little thing going underneath here and show you. Get this little knob, you pull this little knob down, and that swings out the table here. So that gets you uh, some more spots right there. And that, so that person can sit on a cushion right there. And you got this person and me in the driver's seat, and then you got two people over there. So that's five people you could sit down uh, inside the cab here pretty comfortably uh, to have dinner and stuff like that. Now, the person that's sitting over there may look like, hey, what? They're going to fall out the, they're going to fall out the door. But what they actually have, is what you do is you close the door, pull this little lever, close the door, slam the door shut, and then there's another cushion that comes with it. And let's see which way is this. Okay, so put your little cushion here, and that cushion goes there, right? So let me set this back here. So you got that cushion, and so there you do. You got you got five people sitting at the table. Let's flip this back out again. Put this down, back out again. So there you go. Boom. Actually, you can actually fit a couple people there maybe. Six maybe. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, you could work it. It's really five, but I think it'll actually work pretty good. And then you have the TV going. I mean, this is one of the reasons I really like the G is because it had this dinette table and, you know, being able to sit this many people at a table was pretty clutch for me. So, um, so anyways, that's that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is go into more uh, features, actually, of the driver's cab section itself. Okay, I know I'm kind of jumping around this video a little bit, but uh, but bear with me. This will be a long video, so you got to really be into this uh, truck to listen to this whole crazy video. So anyways, um, so those are the seats, pretty comfortable and stuff. One thing is that both of these front seats have to be in the locked forward position for the ignition to work and the truck to start and all that kind of good stuff. But I'll go over some features. Uh, on the steering wheel here, you got uh, your mute and your uh, talk control for uh, using a phone and uh, voice controls and stuff like this. This is your volume control here. Um, again, we've got uh, the menu control for over here and then your telephone uh, answer and hang up over here. Um, I will actually go get my keys so I can show you um, some of the other features. Okay, so I went and got the key. It actually comes with this pretty cool little key, like, boom, snap out. Actually, I kind of did that upside down. But anyways, this cool key, I'm gonna put this on and turn the ignition on so we can show you some of the features of the radio and all that kind of stuff, which I don't even have down completely yet, so. I haven't started for a while, so I'm just gonna start it up. Just make sure it starts, and turn it back off again. Turn the ignition on, I'm gonna turn the fan off. And why is that making that sound? Okay. Okay, so let's go back over some features here. So um, those are the controls. Here's just a video of the dash. And you can use this uh, little mode button down here that goes through some of the menus. Uh, and then you can go down and beep and buzzer volume. And it does all that kind of stuff. But you can do a travel time A. And then you can... You can um, menu down to those you know your basic your basic controls for um, for driving it tells you how many miles and all that kind of stuff let's see if I get to some of those menus buzzer volume let's see here Shit. okay I'm just going to quickly go over some of the features inside the cab um, Okay, you got your window, uh, your mirror controls. So this controls your different mirrors. So there's four quadrants because you got two mirrors on each side. So you just do, you know, your your right mirrors up and down, and then your left mirrors up and down, 
and then you just do that and then they just toggle like this and that you can see that just controls the mirrors this actually pushes the mirror so that it retracts the mirror so when you're parked you can get a nice um, uh, nice and tight to the car this of course is your front uh, your right and left uh, windows and this is your rear door lock unlock and lock okay then of course under here you've got your battery boost which uses your chassis battery sorry your coach battery to boost your ch chassis battery to start the engine if you need it this is your uh, electronic vehicle control uh, information center to uh, hit your mode button and then your up and down arrows to control the information that shows in this area up here uh, we go down this side we've got your um, uh, USB input for your, uh, you, you know, you're hooking your iPhone or your Android or whatever like that in there. And then this is just an auxiliary microphone, 3.5 microphone connection in there. Um, then, of course, you've got, uh, you know, your, your gear shift and just this to take it in and out of tow haul mode. Uh, the basic, you know, air conditioning controls here. Again, this is the, uh, the Uconnect 5.0 radio, which does all kinds of stuff. It's got a radio, it does media. Um, if you have your iPhone connected, it has phone controls, so you can use a phone. It can do, uh, you know, clock and, and compass and um, trip, all kinds of cool stuff like that. So, no. Uh, and then, of course, you can go into your trip mode where you go trip A and trip B and shows all that information there. And then, of course, just your, your volume controls and you're turning it on and off. This also can turn the screen on and off and then of course you got your uh, CD uh, input right there um, the other things we have here we got a USB just for USB charging plug here we've got a um, cigarette lighter 12 volt um, this little key on top I guess that means that when the ignition's in you can use that it's got this crazy clipboard thing up here I guess that's for uh, using it as a work truck it's got this uh, forward um, glove compartment which it's cold in there so it must have been air conditioned uh, this forward cubby section lots of whole lots of good stuff and then of course you've got your uh, glove box on that side on this side you just have just the window controls on that side you know I don't see over there is a is a lock so um, on the key itself let's um, put that in it's got the key itself it comes with a, a pretty cool little key and it's got a little retractable button on here and then it comes with uh, let's see here you got to lock unlock and lock and then locks the back door so uh, we'll set to unlock on that and the lock and then lock the back door boom you can hear that back there okay so that's that so that's pretty much most of the stuff that's inside the cab the visors are pretty standard visors I mean, nothing fancy there they don't really extend down that far which isn't that great uh, we got dome light, so you got auto light, and then you got um, uh, dome light, and then dome light goes on there. So you can turn it off as the middle selection, and then you get auto over here. And then you got your map light on the right, left, and then your map light on the right. Um, nothing fancy up there. Again, uh, handles up there for, for grabbing on for dear life. Uh, pretty substantial cup holders and stuff there, and this is on there pretty good. I think this removes. Yeah, that removes for cleaning, which is, is actually pretty cool. Um, mine came with this Travato carpet. I'm, I'm pretty sure most of them will come with it, but it's pretty nice because underneath here is this crazy, you know, really slick plastic, so it's kind of slippery. Um, underneath this little compartment right here, you have to undo these little tabs to get access to the chassis battery. So the chassis battery's in this compartment down here. I won't show you that, but you basically just got to turn those little those little uh, doohickeys there to get access to that. Um, and it's kind of a pretty substantially sized battery. But uh, that's it for inside the cab. I'm gonna go through some of the features inside the, the uh, inside the coach now. Uh, first of all, let's start off with the radio. Now this is the radio that comes with the 2016 uh, mid-year upgrade. Um, I don't think it comes with the early 2016s. But it's an upgraded radio, and of course it's got uh, a DVD player built in. It's not a Blu-ray, it's just a DVD player. It also can connect with Bluetooth. Um, you can connect to the radio. You can output your uh, sound from your TV um, out through um, the radio. It's got uh, three different speakers, A, B, and C. 
So the A is inside here and the C is outside. I think B is just unused. But um, it allows you to, uh, you know, use the speakers, which are ones under here. There's one. There's the second speaker. And then there's another speaker, which is kind of like, that's kind of like a subwoofer down there. But that's basically the audio system. Now, the TV is automatically connected, and you've got to pull from the side here, and it unclicks from this little, this little clip here, and it clips in here. One thing you got to be careful, I already jammed my fingers, have my fingers in here, and when I shut it, it jammed, it like pinched my fingers, and it created a little owie. So, um, on the inside of the cabinet here, I'm not sure how well you can be able to see this, because it's not too bright in here. Um, we have our TV input controls, and there's a switch that turns the TV on and off, and then there's a, um, a cable output there, which uh, is already set up to, uses these cables automatically set up to go to the TV, but if you wanted to use a different TV, it, that hooks up to the antenna. Now, right beside there's a little button that powers the amplifier, so you have to have that amplifier button on if you want to use the external TV. Um, the remotes that come with it are, this is the DVD remote for the radio, and this is the TV remote that comes with the Jensen TV. Um, I can't remember how many inches this is. I think it's like 21 or something like that. That's pretty good. It's not, you know, nothing awesome, but it works pretty good. So you just snap that clip. It doesn't seem like it's gonna rattle too bad. It seems like it'll be pretty good. Um, but uh, to use the uh, the antenna, um, you have to have, I was first of all, let's turn the TV set on here. So we turn the TV on. You're gonna make sure that little button is on there. Probably leave that on all the time. I don't think it needs a lot of power. There's a little switch on the side here. You gotta turn that on. And that turns on the little um, uh, TV antenna up here. And then you can push the button on the side here. Let me turn that light off. That makes it a little hard to see here. Okay. Turn the little button on there. So you just rotate this. And it rotates the antenna on the top of the car. And you just wick it. So you get two buttons to wait for two. And then you change the attenuator here. Oh. Anyway, so I had two, but I guess I only got one right now. Um, so then you turn the TV on. Oops, I already had it on. And um, you should be able to get a pretty good signal with that. I'm pretty close to in a suburban area right now, and I, and I do pick up quite a few channels here. But um, that's the way it works. And if you change the antenna angle, I'm going to see if I can change it where I don't get a signal. See, it starts to break up there. So basically, you just turn the knob until you get the test until you get the best signal, and um, I can just change the channel here. Let's see what else I got. So it gets a pretty good, a pretty good signal. But so the TV is not great. One problem I have with the TV is the angle. You can see if you're sitting. Most of the time, I'll be sitting up there in that seat up there. Let's turn some lights back on here. Well, I'm sitting up front, and I'm facing this. You can see the angle. It's kind of pointed up, up there. And I really think I'd rather have it. Um, let's turn this off. I think I'd rather have it pointed on an angle like, like this maybe or something, you know. So I'm gonna put like a little bracket back here that angles it down. I think eventually, because I don't like the way that they did that. So anyway, so that's the TV and audio system. Okay, now I'm gonna show you the um, how the dinette folds down. So you see, we went over the how the seating arrangement here with all the seats and you got your five seats here. So this is um, all the cushions you need right here. Plus, I haven't really shown you this storage area up here yet where you keep these extra cushions. But we got this nice big storage area up here, um, which is where you keep all your extra cushions. So you need this one extra cushion. So you need that back, that back, this cushion, this cushion and this cushion, and I will show you um, what it looks like all folded down. Okay, so the first thing you do is you lift up this cushion, that's the bottom cushion here, and then these little hooks right up here, these actually hooks hook right into here, right here. So you just you unhook the hooks, and you fold that down, and then you've got to fold this piece down underneath on the bottom here. And what that does is, let's see if I get a view of that goes like that. So that goes down the bottom. And now it just sits and nice and stable and you push it up there. One thing you have to do is slide this slider toward the front so that it clears, the this base piece clears that. Once you have that in there, this can go here. 
and that can go there. So we got our two main cushions there, okay? Now the next thing you do is pull this up here. Sorry, I'm trying to do this with one hand. Is we're going to take and push this cushion forward. So let's put this over here. Let's push this cushion forward. And we're gonna stick this cushion in the back here. Let me just pop that down in there. Okay, so now you slid the water tank one forward. Then you take and put the backrest in behind it. And now we just got this one section in here we're gonna fill in. So we're gonna use this. So we take a little bar that comes with it in the back of that little little place right here. And that goes across this bar here. So it goes down this little hole here. Let's do it this way. And then it goes across there like that. So that this way, this little rest right here, this little bar, is gonna rest in there. Like that. And that sits in there like that. So that's our full bed. And it's actually a pretty good size. I mean, let's see, that can be a, let's lay down in here. That's actually pretty good, pretty good size. See, well, I'm five foot 10 and I can, I can lay down in here pretty comfortably without my feet hitting the end. So if you're like six two or something like that, uh, you maybe have to go like diagonally or something. Maybe, you see, that way you'd have some room. I got two or three inches in my head and four or five inches, so they even you could work that. So you could fit one or two people in here. So that's, that's pretty comfortable. It actually takes maybe two minutes to fold everything down and put it all back together again. So so anyway, so that's the, uh, the forward bed um, fold down. Okay, the other thing I want to show you up front here is when you take the cushions off, these seats here, you can see that these access holes for the seat belts. They didn't really show you the seat belts. But both of these seats uh, that are forward facing have um, seat belt holes. And I'll show you that real quick. So here's like the right sided belt, and then you know, you got the same thing for the middle belt right here. And those just go up through those holes. Those just go up through those holes. I really wasn't, uh, you know, anticipating anybody coming in the. Um, the Travato to travel with me, so I just kind of leave them tucked in there that we don't have to deal with them if you have to fold up the cushions. So those are the seat belts. Now this big giant thing here in the middle, this is the uh, the Truma Combi, which does the water heating and the um, air heating, and it has these different air vents uh, all over the place. So let me see where the air vents are. So um, there's an air vent facing forward into the cab, which is right here. So there's one of the air vents. And then I guess there's a couple that come back here. There's another air vent under the fridge that shoots out hot air. And there's another one that faces to the back here. So it circulates the air much better than a traditional um, air heater that you see in a small uh, trailer or a uh, Class B. So that the other thing Tommy does obviously is heat the water. So you can see all the different water connections here. So I won't go into what each one of those things does, but uh, you can see the vents that are coming out of the the, the combi to uh, do the air vents and the water and stuff like that. So that's all tightly packed in. There's not really much uh, room to put anything else in here. Maybe I need to mount a. Um, an inverter at some point, so I'm not sure if I'm going to try and slam that in here. Maybe make a little um, post to put it in here, mount it in here, because because this uh, combi thing is pretty good. It takes up most of that uh, most of that section right there. So so anyway, so that's what's uh, under the under the the forward facing seat. That's why in this the big difference between this and the K is that this has this can seat four people with seat belts. So uh, a big difference. So anyway, I'll put this all back together and continue. Okay, just above the seats here, uh, this forward-facing seats in the dinette, you have all the control panels. And I'll just go through each one of these one at a time. So first of all, we'll start with the one place. Um, this is where you turn the water pump on and off. So you turn the pump on, turns it on, and you'll see it switched to on, and you turn it off. The other place you can turn it on and off, of course, is that back, um, in the back there, when you need to turn the water on for that outside shower. So this gives us our tank levels. So see if we can get in there nice and close. Fresh water, 
LP gas, gray, and black tank levels. And this gives our battery voltage levels for both the ch uh, chassis and um, house battery. And here we got, uh, so that's all that. The other thing we got up here is the uh, generator start and stop and then meter for the generator. I don't want to turn my generator on right now, but trust me, that button just starts it. Just push and hold and it starts it. Okay, the other thing over here, we got this power control system. What this does is allows you to, um, let me to close this a little bit so you can see that a little better. It really didn't help, but um, what it does is allows you to uh, control with the input from the from the shore whether or not you're on a 20 or a 30 amp uh, circuit. So I'm just on a 20 amp circuit at home, so I put that, and this helps control. It won't let you uh, pop your pop your breakers. It won't let you put more than 20 amps on the system at once if you have it selected to 20. And then it has a display of how many amps you're actually drawing right now. So right now it's saying, I guess, that I've got the uh, water heater, the fridge, and the AC on that circuit. And those are the things that it will actually control and keep you from um, breaking a circuit if you try to run, you know, microwave and the AC and the water heater and everything on full max. Obviously, you can't do all that on 20 amps. So, so that's the, the power control system. Then we have our LP tank uh, on and off. It's just a, uh, a valve that's con uh, controlled with a solenoid to turn the LP tank on and off for safety. And then we got the Truma. So this is the uh, control panel for controlling that Truma combi that I showed you under the seat. And I showed you the exhaust on the outside of the truck. And I'm just going to go through briefly the controls for controlling the Truma. And I, I really wanted this Truma system. That's why I got the... Uh, Travato 259G in the late 2016 mo model because the early 2016 model and the 2015 didn't come with this. This um, this was a new thing for 2016. I think the K's, the early K's came out with it, but um, not the uh, Travato G. So anyways, so it just displays the time on the main screen. So you hit the button right here. And um, the first thing that comes up with flashes is just the temperature of inside the coach so you can um select that and you can the default is off when you turn it on and then you can just crank the temperature up let's say i want to heat it to 62 degrees so i want to keep let's say 65 let's say i want to keep it at 65 you hit enter and then it'll it'll start heating it as you can see it's got the little flame up there letting you know that it's going to uh warm up the coach now the next thing you can do is go over to um the selection of how you want to use the heat um, and you can just do it shows the bottle so it's just the gas right now and then mix one is gas and low electric power and then mix two is gas and double electric power so i think it's like 1700 watts electric and gas so it's like basically it'll 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 uh, heat up really fast and then there's electric one low power electric and then uh, full power electric and then, um, so those are your different choices for combinations. Uh, most of the time, I think I'm just going to use propane to heat my water and to heat the air. So I'll leave that on that. Um, let's go back to the water now. So this is the water temperature. So you select that on there. You have three choices for water. You have, you have, you have off, okay, you got 104. So it keeps the temperature at 104. And you've got... Uh, 140 degrees you can have your water at and then they got boost which basically um, uh, I think it just keeps the water really hot and it uses uh, uh, more energy to heat your water but uh, I'm not really sure about boost so if anybody's got any input on boost let me know um, and then we go down to fan this controls your fan you have the eco or high on your fan and then of course you keep rolling across and you've got um, timers. You can have a timer set for when you want to start, when you want to stop at your um, your heating system. And we'll go back to there. This sets your clock. Right now it's 234, so we're just going to leave that alone. And then this goes, uh, changes like the brightness of the uh, screen right here. I have it down like right, really low right now so I can so I can film it. But if I hit that, oops, I hit that, you can crank it up and really blast some light into there but we're going to keep it down so it's easier to film 
language, of course. You can choose your language there. 12 or 24 hours. Temperature, uh, Fahrenheit or Celsius. You can reset the system. And then offset, I believe offset is just basically if you want to calibrate the system, if it's, if it's off, you can, you can either increase uh, or decrease the number, the temperature, depending on um, how you feel it needs to be calibrated. So I'm just going to leave that at zero because I haven't really calibrated mine yet. And then back, back to that. So for right now, if I want to turn off everything, I'm going to go um, back to the screen. I'm going to go back to this. And I want to turn that temperature all the way back down to off again. That shuts off the air heating. And then I want to roll it forward and go to the water heating. And right now it's off. I turn it off at the end, so then the whole system's off. So that's good. So that's the true Macombi. Boy, that was really long. Um, but it's really not that complicated. When I first got it, it seemed like I was having a hard time figuring it out. But it's really uh, pretty easy to use. And it does heat up pretty nice and quick uh, on gas only. And I think it would be a better choice altogether than a separate water heater and uh, uh, coach air heater. So those are all the controls right there for the uh, coach.